I'm Caitlin Vanderbilt, and I'm the lab manager and technician in the Aragona Laboratory here at the University of Michigan. I'm interested in the neurobiology of motivated behaviors and how this circuitry becomes dysregulated in psychological disorders like addiction. Here in the Aragona lab, we utilize a state-of-the-art in vivo recording technique called fast scan cyclic voltammetry. Using this technique, we can measure dopamine release in real time in awake and freely moving animals. My research focuses on novelly characterizing how opiates with various pharmacological properties affect dopamine release within the ventral striatum in real time as the infusion occurs. The mesolimbic dopamine pathway within the brain is important for motivating animals to seek rewards important for our survival. For example, food intake, water intake, and sex. A region within this circuitry called the nucleus accumbens has been heavily implicated in mediating the reinforcing and rewarding properties of these rewards. Unfortunately, drugs of abuse can take over this system, leading to the persistent seeking and administration of drugs, which can lead to addiction. When I started in Brandon's lab, no studies had yet been able to examine how opiates affect real-time dopamine release. Opiates are a class of drugs of abuse that include morphine, heroin, and oxycodone, or more popularly known as oxycontin or oxy. So I decided to start my study with the classical opiate morphine. So Previous studies have shown that morphine causes a steady tonic increase in dopamine for a couple of hours after infusion. Our voltammetry results suggest that this is actually a little bit more complex than originally thought. So after infusion, morphine causes a significant increase in dopamine release, but this dopamine um, returns to basal levels or at even below basal levels after infusion and remains so for the rest of our 15 minute recording period. This was unexpected considering uh, morphine's long half-life but studies have suggested that um, morphine is relatively inefficient at crossing the blood-brain barrier despite having a high affinity for mute opiate receptors, so we decided to look at a different drug. Oxycodone is another opiate that has a half-life on the order of hours. However, it has a lower affinity at mute opiate receptors, but is more efficient at crossing the blood-brain barrier. So oxycodone, um, causes, after infusion, causes a very robust increase in overall dopamine release, um, both physically and tonically, and dopamine levels remain elevated for the, almost the entirety of our 15-minute recording period. Next, we decided to look at a different drug, um, remifentanil. So remifentanil is an ultra-short-acting mu opioid receptor agonist. So remifentanil, um, after infusion, causes a very robust increase in dopamine release, but matching its metabolism, it falls back to basal levels within about 60 seconds, which matches its metabolism in, in brain and in plasma. This work is ongoing, and we are currently collaborating with the Kennedy Lab to replicate this study using fast sampling microdialysis. Using these two complementary in vivo recording techniques, we have shown how different opiates affect dopamine release in real time. 